Hello everyone and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. This is Colin and today we are doing a prototype playthrough. I don't do a ton of those, but this one, One Hit Heroes, just looked too good to pass up on. If you know either of the games, Five Minute Mystery or we have Five Minute Dungeon, both really fun cooperative games. There's also Five Minute Marvel. I ended up not keeping that one because I liked the Five Minute Dungeon better. Both of those games are made by the same individual, Connor Reed and the Wiggles 3D. And my family and I have absolutely loved them. Love them. So when they reached out to us, I just had to say yes. So in this game, here's the theme. We are one hit heroes chasing rumors of a strange metal called Infinitum, an amplifying material that can be catastrophic in the wrong hands to make matters worse your enemies are so deadly that all of them can defeat you with a single hit you'll need to use every tool you can to stay alive and each fight only gets more difficult than the last the final version of the game will have three episodes episode one episode two uh, right here episode three and then also an epilogue Okay, all I have right now is episode one and two, three and the epilogue are empty. So I think those are still in development, but these one and two definitely feel like they are set and ready to go. Now, if you'd like to see a playthrough of episode one, uh, Co-op Guild and One Stop Co-op Shop will both have playthroughs of those. When I see them go live, I'll put links in the description below. But I thought it'd be a lot of fun to do season two because that's really when the bosses open up. I think the bosses are really cool in that one. Uh, each of these episodes has four bosses that you play through in a sequential order. After each boss, so long as you fight, you'll open up a booster pack for that boss, draft two cards, and you upgrade your deck. So this is, there's a little bit of a deck building aspect as you play, which is really fun. I love upgrading your characters, and then you'll see them as you're playing, because your decks are very small. So this, ca this game is based on card play, and your deck is only nine cards large, and you have five cards in your hand. So you see your cards very often. So being able to upgrade them or uh, get new cards, you see those right away. I do want to call out this is a prototype and this is prototype rules so everything here is subject to change so don't watch this if you're getting the final version of the game don't watch this for rules I'll probably do a new one when that comes out because I'm definitely backing this oh I do want to call out I did not receive any compensation for this and after I do this playthrough I'll be sending this along to someone else so I'm not even keeping this copy I'll be buying my own for sure <laughs> With all of that out of the way, we'll do a brief setup just so you can see how that works. And let's start playing to see if it's something you would like to back. Currently, one hit heroes can only be played at two to four players, which means I have to control two characters. There are some rumors that there'll be a solo mode that they'll talk about during the actual campaign. But right now, all I have is the two to four player version. So I'm going to show you the two player version. We have our player board here. We get to choose one. Well, we'll be picking two out of the six characters. I'm going to be playing Roro, the claw robot, as one of them. We have our card that just denotes which character we're playing. Plane, and then we have two items. Think of these items as shields because when you get attacked, instead of you automatically being defeated, you can destroy one of your items to protect yourself. Uh, but if ever you have no items and you take a damage and there's no way that you don't have reaction cards to deal with it, you just lose. So it can end quickly. <laughs> Roro has two items that are available to him. He has the protection module. When you block with this, you may also block for another hero at the same time. And he has the strategy module. Once per turn, he can spend two energy to remove vote for aggro from another hero. Speaking of aggro, we have three aggro that we start off with that fills up our gray area here. You can see there's different colors. That's really important for bosses. And when you roll the boss die, uh, whenever they attack, depending upon what color you roll, you'll see if you take damage or not. So we're starting at the gray, which is the best place that you can be. Uh, but as we deal damage to the boss, we'll actually take the health because these are also used for health for the boss. Kind of a cool mechanic. You actually put it right here and it increases your your aggro stats okay and then you're more likely to get damage from the boss we also have three energy here and we have our nine cards now I'm just going to draw five of them as you start with five in your hand there are three different types of cards you can have in your hand I have two of them one are actions the other are weapons and the third are reactions we don't have any reactions 
over here, you can see a symbol. We have a recycle. That means it goes into your discard pile after the end of your turn versus that symbol is a burn symbol. That means after you've played that, you burn it from your deck. It's gone unless you have a way to manipulate what's in your burn pile. Okay, so I've got two actions and three weapons. So for an example, this one says I can spend an energy to play an item from my burn pile. Ha, so it can help me after I burn one. I've got grapple here, which does, there's light and heavy damage. That symbol means it's light damage, okay? This one, overwhelm looks awesome. It deals two light and one heavy, but I have to destroy one of my items in order to play it, and it's a one-time use. Uh, we have another grapple. We have a recharge. If you have an empty item slot, I can gain two energy. And then we have our salvage run. Here we have the pink Power Ranger, <laughs> Taki. That's who she reminds me of. Uh, she also starts with the three aggro and three energy. She also has two uh, items. All of the characters start with that setup, plus their nine cards. Her two items are fancy shoulder pads. If you've played an action card this turn, you may play an extra card. So normally you can only play three cards a turn. If she plays at least one action card, she gets to play four. And she has the prototype Zord. I mean, come on, Power Rangers. Once per turn, I can spend two energy to remove two aggro from all heroes. So she can help Roro with some of the aggro because you're going to see Roro likes to protect other characters. And Taki then can help protect Roro, which I love about this game. There's tons of cooperation. Taki will draw her five cards. She has a katana. She has hop to it. She has another katana. She has a transformation. Apparently, I'm only going to draw four. And we have misdirection. That's our number five. So here we have our first weapon. This says if you've played two actions this turn, this can actually deal heavy damage instead of light. As you can imagine, heavy damage is harder to come by. And uh, you can always convert heavy to light damage, but light damage can never be converted to heavy. So you want to have heavy damage. We have an action that lets us have choose a hero to draw two cards. We have our katana. If you've played two actions, I think we've seen that one. We have transformation, remove two aggro from any hero. And we have our first reaction card. This one can be played during a boss's turn. After the boss attacks, reroll the attack die and use a new result instead. Each episode will have four bosses you need to fight. You always start with boss number one, and then you go to boss number four. We'll see how many we want to do here, but we're definitely going to do a couple. And I will say, you normally, if you lose, you just restart and replay that boss till you defeat it. If we end up losing one, we'll just keep moving forward so I can show you the different bosses. At the top of the boss mat, we can see we're playing the friendly bartender. He has a total of 10 light uh, health and five heavy health and if we reduce those amounts to zero then we defeat the boss whenever it's the boss turn we're going to activate this ability which states all heroes gain two aggro and then if any hero is in red aggro he immediately attacks and when he attacks he rolls the attack die this attack die has all the different colors of the aggro except for gray so it can never hit the gray for aggro. If you're in gray, you're almost always safe, except for that first side I showed. See that hit? It no matter what hits every single player. It doesn't matter where your aggro's at. There's also a miss, which no matter what, if your aggro's all the way at purple at the top, he doesn't hit you. Uh, but otherwise, it's all the different colors of aggro. And anybody, even if you're not the active player, if I wasn't the active player and he rolls this yellow and I'm already in yellow, uh, the yellow aggro area, I get hit for damage. And that means I have to burn one of those items, use a reaction card, or if I'm destroyed, then we lose that and we have to restart the scenario. Each boss has a little bit of fun flavor text on the back. Rumor has it that McClank's gang is the one in control of this infinitum metal. Looks like you asked too many questions, though. This friendly bartender isn't looking so friendly anymore. Our instructions. This boss has a special boss deck, so you're going to see all the bosses work a little bit differently. In general, they have a set of cards. You're going to be drawing one each turn and resolve them, but he's going to work a little different. When you set up this boss, reveal three cards instead of just one from his boss deck. At the start of your turn, you must choose one of the drink cards and place it in front of your player mat. Choose carefully, that drink card will affect you for the rest of the fight. Okay, And then unlike a regular boss deck, when you reveal a new card, place it beside the other cards instead of on top of the previous one. There should always be uh, three drink cards to pick at the start of a hero's turn, at least until the deck runs out. And then it says here, new drinks don't replace the ones you've already taken. That means effects can pile up. And eventually the boss deck will run out. And after that, you don't need to take any more. 
Let's take a look at these three drinks. Our first one says, aggro can't be removed from your player mat. That one's terrible. So if I took that, I could no longer get rid of aggro. And as you can imagine, remember, he attacks whenever any hero is in red aggro. So that could be really bad. Oh, at the start of a hero's turn, you destroy one of your items, your blue items. Those are what protect your health. So if I took that at the start of each of my turns, I would be destroying an item. Oh, I wouldn't last very long. Uh, our third one we have is you cannot play reactions. Okay, not terrible. That one's probably the one I'm going to start with. <laughs> We're now all ready to start our playthrough. Let's decide who our first player will be. We're going to have Taki be our first player. That means she needs to choose one of these three. The items and the aggro is terrible. We're going to have where she can no longer play reactions for the rest of the game. That means this misdirection card is absolutely useless and it's going to clog up her hand for the rest of the game. We cannot willy nilly just discard cards. So she's gonna have this card in her hand and she's not going to be able to do anything about it. Kind of annoying, but it is what it is. So I think the first thing we are going to do is play transformation. This is an action. We can play up to three cards on our turn. This allows us to remove two aggro from any hero. We're gonna place this out into our play area. We don't place it immediately into our discard pile. We can tell we place it in our discard pile because of that symbol, the recycle symbol. We're gonna place this out on the table. At the end of our activation, we'll take all those cards and either burn them or put them in our discard pile. As much as I want to get rid of my own aggro, I know Roro is all about getting rid of aggro for other players, so we're going to clean up his uh, board with that action. Because we played an action card this turn, we will get to play an extra card this round as well, so we'll play four cards instead of three. With the cards remaining, let's do a hop to it for our second card, and we're going to choose a hero to draw two cards. Let's choose Roro. So Roro will draw two more cards. He's got a swipe and a swipe. Oh, nice. He is loaded. We can now play it two more cards, and I think we know what we're going to do. Katana time. Now, we're going to play both of these. It states if we've played two actions this turn, which we have, these both deal heavy damage instead of light damage. We'll grab two of the heavy tokens here. There are three remaining. We have to place both of those markers onto our aggro bar, filling it up, though. We're now in the green section. We've played all the cards we can from our hand, but we can still use our items. We're going to use this item. We may spend two energy to remove two aggro from all heroes. Our energy will be ticked down to one, but we can remove the two aggro we just put on here. And we only have one more we can take from Roro, but Roro is completely clean. That will end our activation. So we will look at all the cards we played. All of them have the recycle symbol, so we'll place them in our discard pile, not our burn pile. We have one card left in hand. We get to draw up to five. So we have a triple throw and energize. We have another hop it and we have double time. So those are our five cards in hand. After a player's activation, the boss activates. The first thing you activate is what's ever on their mat. This says all heroes gain two aggro. Then if any hero has red aggro, it would be able to attack. After that, we look at any of the cards generally for the bosses, but this boss is unique. These cards actually just impact us instead of having some sort of activation, so we can ignore those. We'll just deal with the two aggro, and for each of us, that will not put us into the red, so we're okay. We're going to grab two of these from the supply for each of us, dropping it into our aggro bar. This will mean Roro has two aggro. And Taki is here in the green, but not in the red, which is over here. So we have no activation. We're now done with our turn and the boss's turn. We'll go to Roro's turn. First thing Roro needs to do is reveal the next card. And we have at the end of your turn, lose two energy. Well, that's definitely better than these other two. So we're going to grab, they have names on the back. This is the moonshine. We're going to have the robot grab the moonshine. Roro is going to start with his strategy module. He is going to spend two energy to remove four aggro from another hero. We know who that hero is going to be. It's going to be Taki. Managing your aggro is one of the fun parts of the game, and I love how much you can interact with other players' aggro and help them out. I do want to call out right now you've been seeing all heavy damage in the aggro slots. You can have the uh, light damage in there too. It does the same thing. I just use the uh, heavy ones to start with, and that's all the damage we've done so far. We have an absolutely loaded hand. Look at this. <laughs> I think we're going to start with a fun one. Should we overwhelm? This will deal two light and a heavy. Okay, in order to do that, though, we have to destroy one of our blue items to do it. And at the end of this round, we're going to have to burn this card so it's a one-time use. 
we're going to burn this strategy module. Uh, hopefully I can get it back. We'll grab two light and one heavy from the boss. With dropping all three of that aggro, we're now into the green section of aggro, which is okay. We just don't want to get to the red. For our second action then, let's play our salvage run. This will also be a burn though. We're going to spend an energy, and you can see here I have one energy left, so we just spent it, to play an item from our burn pile. See, remember that one we just burned? I'm sliding it right back. But then this one will be burned at the end of our turn. Okay, and then, this is crazy, but we're gonna play swipe. We can do one heavy damage, now it says lose an energy. I don't have any energy to lose. If you have something that says lose an energy, you can still do the effect of the card. If it said spend energy, then we cannot. But if it says lose and you can't lose, you can still play the card. That's at least in the rules now. We'll see if that changes in the production. But in the prototype, that's how this works. So we're going to do a swipe for our third card. This does mean we only have one more heavy damage we need to do. Unless, of course, this boss heals, but I don't think this boss does. So that's all we're going to do on our turn. We're going to take our cards that we played. Two of them are actually burns, so these two are gone. This one will be placed in our discard pile. Because Taki allowed us to draw two cards, we still have four cards in hand, so we're only going to draw one when we get Tactical Retreat. Play in the boss's return. If the attack die is green, change it to a miss. Sweet, and we can still play that. It's only Taki who can't play reactions. During the boss's turn, then, we each will generate two more aggro. We're just outside of the red. And Taki is also outside of the red, so no attack. We're okay so far. Now it's back to Taki's turn. She needs to grab one of those three cards. I'm kind of assuming the Sarsaparilla is what we're going to grab because these two are so stinky. Your heavy damage effects deal light damage instead. Perfect. We've only taken, almost taken out all of the heavy damage. So we will definitely have the Sarsaparilla. No matter what, for the rest of the game, or the rest of this boss, we can only deal light damage. And I almost forgot Roro had a swig of his moonshine. He should lose two energy, but of course he doesn't have any, so we're okay. Looking at the cards that we have in our hand, I think we're going to start with Energize. This will just generate us one total energy, so we'll slide from one to two, which I definitely like. Our second action, I think we're going to play Hop It. We're going to choose a hero to draw two cards. Roro is going to draw two cards again. His first one will be the Salvage Run. That's awesome. And then he only has one other card, and that's his Swipe. That will go into his hand. So I've played two action cards, and since I played an action, I get to play an extra card. So I think I'm going to start with this Triple Throw. This would normally deal one light, but if you've played two actions this turn, deal three light damage instead. Don't mind if I do. Right now, these two are singing together. This is fun. The three light damage will put us right at the edge of green, so we've got to be a little bit careful with that. But I have my two energy here, and that will allow us to remove two aggro from both players. So two here from us gets us down to the bottom part of green. And the two on Roro means that he will not be moved up to red during this turn. Our last card we'll play then is Double Time. Repeat the effect of another action you've played this turn. The one we're going to repeat is, I think, this one, just to give us one energy, some Energize. So we're back up to one energy. And that's it. So I will shuffle and redraw all the cards that I played were discard, none of them were burn. I got a ton of actions and one katana. Now we each generate one aggro, still within green for Taki. Roro will also gain two, but keeps himself outside of red, thanks to Taki. Our next drink is a vodka. <laughs> what is this going to be? You don't draw cards at the end of your turn. Oh, that would be horrendous. Actually, would it be? We have so many cards in our hand, and you know what? Taki lets us draw. Actually, you know what? This isn't terrible. We're going to grab that one, so we will, we will not draw up at the end of our turn. Instead, I think we're going hard bore here trying to hit this boss. We're going to play Grapple, which does one light damage, and we can take up a, up to two aggro from other heroes. And then we're going to play a Swipe, followed by a Swipe. Both of those, we lose energy, but you know what? We don't have any. Can't lose any when you don't have any, and you can still play the card. I love that. We had two heavy damage there, but there's only one heavy health left. That's fine. We can convert it to a light and then one more light. So only three health left for the friendly bartender. This is, however, going to fill up our board almost completely. And don't forget, 
we played grapple, which allows us to grab two aggro from another hero. We're going to do that. We'll grab the two aggro here. So we're down at the lower section of the green for Taki. And we'll place one here for Roro. And then the second one, because we have no spot to put it, just gets discarded. <laughs> now, normally at the end of our turn, we draw up to five. But remember, we have, which drink is this? This is the vodka. We do not be, we're not able to draw any cards and we lose two energy. I don't have any energy to begin with. We now both will gain two aggro. We can't hold any, so that doesn't happen. But Taki will gain two, keeping her though at green. That's why I wanted to take those two so she's not pushed to yellow. That's important because the friendly bartender will now attack because someone is at red aggro or more. That's Roro. So let's grab our dice tray and give it a roll. I wouldn't mind a green because we have a reaction to change that to a miss. Oh, we just rolled a miss. So a total miss on both of our heroes. That's great. We're back to Taki's turn. We're going to flip a card. You can only play one card per turn. No, we are not picking that one. So I think for our turn, can I deal three damage? I don't know if I can deal three damage. So I'm going to grab your aggro can't be removed from your player mat. So she can't deal any heavy damage. That's fine. She can't play reaction cards. And now she can't remove any aggro. <laughs> Right now, Taki only has one damage in her hand. She needs to deal three. So she's going to play the Hoppet, so that allows her to draw two cards. She gets a triple throw, and she gets Energize. Uh, triple throw. Oh, perfect. You know what we can do? Energize for action two. That will give us our second energy back. And then let's use our triple throw. If you've played two actions this turn, deal three light damage instead of the one. That's all we need. This boss is no more. Yeah, that was super fast. We're definitely doing another one. <laughs> so how this works, after you defeat a boss, there is a booster pack for that specific boss. Now, after you've played through these episodes, you can actually pull all these cards in these booster packs together. And every time you play the bosses, you can get a random assortment of those cards. Uh, but it's really fun, especially for this first time that you're going through an episode to use these booster packs because what well, you're gonna see, there's gonna be cards that are specific to different drinks that you are essentially drafting into your decks, which is really cool. There are eight cards in each of these. Each player would draft two. So if I was playing with four players, you'd use all eight. We will only draft two each, so four will not be used. Here we have our eight cards to choose from. We have two more weapons. I definitely think I'm going to be drafting both of those. You're going to see it. We're going to need weapons in the next fight. We also have three more items. If ever you have more than two items in your deck, you get to choose which two items you want to have set out. And then if you have another item in your hand when an item slot is empty, you can place it out into your item area. So those items can be more ways to protect yourself. The reaction card is great because you can just use it to block a, an attack. And then we have two more actions. We know we want to have one of those actions going to Taki. Although it's lose for aggro, I think I want Roro to have that. But I want action cards in Taki's deck. So maybe what I'll do for Roro, I'm going to have him grab the Honey McLeod Mead because it, he'll lose for aggro and discard two cards totally worth it to discard some cards to be able to remove some of that aggro he's taking. Then why don't we grab the TN Tequila for him? If you have any blue items in your burn pile, deal one light and one heavy damage instead. It normally just deals one light damage. That seems fun. That seems like a cool combo. We will have for Taki, she's going to grab the big squeeze because that looks cool. And then discard your hand, draw five cards. So she discard four cards to draw five. She could get good cards in her hand. But is that, is that that amazing? You know, she's got a lot of actions already. Maybe I want to go for one of these. Uh, this one states, while you have the uh, red aggro, deal a minor damage whenever you play or a light damage whenever you play a weapon. Ah, what the heck? The actions seem to make the most sense for her. So she's going to grab Virgil's uh, Vintage Vodka. Okay, now what we're going to do is reset, just like we did before, with two items, three aggro each, and I will show you our new boss. Boss number two is one of my favorites, McClank Gang. Okay, we have a passive. The heroes must defeat all eight of his McClanks to win. So there's actually minions. All of these are minions in this stack. You've heard that Mama Clank is responsible for sending off huge amounts of infinitum somewhere. Looks like the McClank Gang won't let you get to her without a fight, though. 
We uh, This deck is full of minions. Defeat them all to win. Unlike a regular boss deck, when you reveal a new card, place it beside the other cards uh, instead of on top of the previous ones, and then add the damage tokens as applicable. You can always split damage between multiple enemies. That's really important. Every minion does its effect each turn, so defeat them quickly before you get overwhelmed. Minions stick around between turns and use their powers uh, each turn until they're defeated. And then place defeated minions back in the episode tray, basically out of play, so you won't ever redraw them. And then when multiple minions are out, you always resolve them in low to high. Our first minion that we have, and they all go sideways. Of course, I flipped it the wrong way. We have Dan. And this one says all heroes lose one energy. We need to deal two light damage and one heavy to him. So long as we do that, we don't even have to worry about our aggro because there is no attack. The boss is not going to be adding more aggro. We just need to take Dan out. That's our goal for this turn. We do need to decide who goes first. So Roro will draw five. Don't forget full energy and only three total uh, aggro to start with. So we have a grapple. We have a tactical retreat, a recharge, salvage run, and a honey McClank mead. So I don't think I want him to go first. He only has one uh, small damage he can do. Taki will also draw five cards. Let's see. She's got hop it, transformation, triple throw, katana, and katana. Yeah, we're definitely going to have her go first. Uh, let's see. We're going to start with hop it. We're going to have a hero draw two cards. And remember, because we played one uh, action card, we get to play four cards this turn. We're definitely going to have Roro draw two. Maybe he can get some more weapons. Oh, how about two weapons? That's amazing. He'll put both of those in his hand. Uh, then we're going to play remove two aggro from any hero. Let's do Roro again. Uh, it's always helpful to help Roro because Roro will help us later. So he's down to only having one aggro right now. And we've played two actions. We can play two more cards. I think we'll play our triple throw followed by our katana because we've played two actions. We can deal one heavy and then this would deal three light. But all we need and all we can do right now is two light. But that'll be enough to take out Dan. Dan is toast and all of this will be aggro for us. We can still trigger our items as well. So I will use two energy going down to one to remove two aggro from ourselves and two aggro from Roro, which is just one. He now has no aggro at all. And that's all we've got. We've got one card in hand. We get to draw four. All the cards we played, I mean, her deck is fun, you guys. All the cards we played were uh, discards. So they'll just all go to the discard pile. She's got a Hop It, Double Time, The Big Squeeze, our Vintage Vodka, and another Katana. Our next minion to pop out is Crazy Kate McClank. Now, this attack means no matter what, we're going to roll that attack die unless we can get rid of the two heavy damage here, which I think we can. We actually can, but it's somewhat wasteful. I'm trying to decide if it's worth it, but I think I'm just going to do it. <laughs> uh, we're going to overwhelm her. So the two light damage won't matter, but the heavy damage will. That will deal one heavy damage, although we have to destroy one of our blue items. We'll grab that heavy damage here. We'll pop that right here, and then the protection module will burn for now. Our second action, then, we're going to play the TN Tequila. It says, if you have any items in your burn pile, we do, we actually will deal a light and a heavy damage. Well, that heavy damage is what we need. This means we no longer need to worry about Kate. That does mean, though, we have our second aggro, and then I do think for our third action, we are going to play our salvage run. So we're going to spend one energy, and we can grab an item from our burn pile, place it here. Okay, this card is going to be burned, but then we'll also use this, spending the other two uh, energy we have to grab the four aggro that Taki has. So Taki will have no aggro at all, and we have green aggro. And uh, then we have four cards in hand. We'll draw just one. We have a swipe. And then if you look at the cards we played, two of them are burns. Oh, that hurts so much. Those two are gone. The tequila will just be in our discard pile. The next minion is Boomer McClank. All heroes destroy one of your blue items. That will happen every turn until we get rid of him. Two uh, light damage and one heavy. I think we can do that because we have two damage here and a heavy damage so long as we play two actions. So I think I'm going to start with the hop it. Choose a hero to draw two cards. Uh, we'll choose we'll choose ourselves for that one. Yeah, let's grab our two. Okay, so we have our first action. We'll then repeat that with, or do I, let's see. 
Ooh, energize. Yeah, let's do energize for our second action. Yeah, actually, that is great because we'll be able to use our item in a second. But we've played two uh, actions, which means our katana now will deal one heavy damage instead of a light. And then our fourth one will be the big squeeze, which is two light. And that one, we can spend energy to remove four aggro from another hero. You know, that one does two from both of us. Uh, but it costs us two. Yeah, I think I'm going to do my item. I'm going to forego this one because I can remove two from both of us. No, you know what? We're not going to have that much. Let's do this one. We'll spend one energy and we'll remove four aggro from Roro. That just seems so good. He's down back to the gray, removing all four of these. And we only have one energy left. One heavy and two light is just enough to take out the boomer. The boomer is a goner. <laughs> okay, all those cards we played... We simply place in the discard pile all four of them. And I have three cards left in hand, so I need to shuffle. We have both the big squeeze and triple throw. Artemis McClank is our next minion, and he is a pain. Okay, I need two heavy damage. I don't have that with Roro. Place a weapon in your hand onto your deck. So he's going to take weapons and throw them on top of our deck, and I need two heavy damage. I do at least have a swipe, so I can do one heavy damage. I don't have energy, any energy to lose, but that's okay. One heavy feels good. Looking at our board, there isn't a ton else we can do, so I think I'm going to use the Honey McClank Mead. Lose four aggro, but discard two cards. I'm going to discard these two, keeping the Tactical Retreat in my hand. That will clear out all of our aggro which I do alike, but there isn't anything else I can do. So then I'm going to drop to five. We have grapple. We have salvage run. We have a swipe and I need to shuffle. And our fifth card will be the TN tequila. After we've drawn up, this now comes into effect. We each need to place a weapon that's in our hand on top of our deck. I think I'm going to grab the triple throw. Oh no, that could deal three yeah, you know what? I'm going to grab the big squeeze for Taki, placing that on top of her deck. And the TN Tequila will go on to the top of Roro's deck. Our next minion is Cletus McClank. And now we will get attacked every turn unless we get rid of him. But that weapon one is way more important. Speaking of which, looking at our hand, we're going to play the Vodka card for our first one. Discard your hand, draw five cards. Don't mind if I do. And that card was super awesome because we now have a katana. So I think I am going to play this Hoppet. Choose a hero to draw two cards. We're going to choose Roro. Roro will draw a recharge and that TN Tequila, of course, because we place it on top of our deck. We've played two action cards. We can play two more. Our katana will be our next one, dealing that one heavy damage we need. This will mean Artemis is toast, and that will be our fourth... Uh, aggro on our board and then for our fourth action we'll play that katana and we will take out that other heavy damage because we've played two actions Berndt absolutely despises the power rangers but i have to say it taki is probably one of my favorite characters because of all the card draw and awesome things she can do <laughs> all four of those cards don't get discarded either so i will draw back up i have two here so two more actions and then i'll shuffle and draw for my last one my last card will be a hop it and we now need to deal with the attack we are only at green aggro for taki we are at nothing for roro so we'll roll this we're at purple that means no one gets hit wow all right roro is up next we now have honey may mcclank and you might be wondering how many more minions are there two there's a total of eight so we've got to get through these two and two more Looking at our options, I think we're going to start with a swipe and a TN tequila. So the swipe's going to do some heavy damage. The TN tequila will just do a light because we still have both of our items. So we don't get the free heavy damage as well. That will place both of these on our aggro line. And remember, you can split these up whenever you deal damage, which is awesome. And then we'll end with our grapple here, doing one more light. That will take out Cletus. And then we're going to grab two of the aggro from Taki. That will move Taki down to the gray slot. Uh, but we'll gra grab these two plus the one that is on Cletus. So three more into our aggro bar. So apparently Roro should never play with cards that have energy usage because I seem to never have energy. <laughs> oh, that was still great. I have three cards in hand. I'll draw up to five. I've got a grapple and I have another swipe. 
We'll then each gain three aggro, but no attack this time, which I will take. The three aggro will fill up the green area for Taki. Our next minion is Doc McClank. Annoying. Restore all other minions to full health. You know what that means? We need to kill Honey May. But really, we could leave Doc until the end if we needed. <laughs> uh, because he won't heal himself. And as long as we kill the other minions, he doesn't really do anything to us. Speaking of which, our big squeeze we have here with Taki we're going to use for the two light damage that will take out Honey May. And we're going to spend the energy to remove four aggro from Roro. I have to say, I'm doing pretty good with managing these minions. When I played this with my wife, we had four minions out at one point. We were not doing great. We'll place that two aggro here, spend the one energy, and four aggro off of Roro gets him down to the green area. We'll then just do some energizing, gaining one energy. We will then remove two aggro from ourselves, so we also get down to the green area. And then we're going to choose Roro to draw two cards. Roro has one, and then he needs to shuffle. His second card will be the TN Tequila. Apparently, I decided to take these middle two aggro. Can't do that, so we'll slide this over there. We're at the top of the green. I will draw up to five. One, two, three, four, five. Looking good. We would have all other minions heal, but we don't have to worry about that. We'll move to Roro's turn. Oh boy, we have Auntie B. McClank, four heavy damage, and if we don't take her out, double attacks. Oh my gosh, and this is a terrible combination. I forgot about this. Uh, we have to get rid of him. I mean, I don't think I have any character that can deal four heavy damage on their turn, so then this just heals. So we've got to go heavy on light damage. We need four light damage to get rid of him and then knock down Aunt, uh, Aunt B. as soon as possible. With our cards in our hand, I think we're going to start with a TN Tequila for the one light damage. We don't get the heavy. We're also going to do the grapple here, taking two aggro from Taki. That'll be another light damage. And then we're going to lose four aggro, discarding two cards. Our two cards we're going to discard. This hurt a little bit, but I think I'm going to do Tactical Retreat and Recharge. We're going to discard both of those. This means we dealt half damage to uh, this minion, plus two aggro from Taki. And then we'll discard all four thanks to that honey mead we just drank. We only have two cards in hand, so we'll draw two more, and then we'll shuffle up and draw our last one. And we drew our TN Tequila. All other minions would now restore to full health, but this one is already at full, and then we get attacked not once, but twice. Right now, there's only two sides on this die that can hit us, green and hit. Everything else will miss. So our first roll is a green that will hit both of us. Well, perfect. As much as that stinks, Roro does have the protection module. When you block with this, you may also block for another hero at the same time. So we just blocked for both Taki and Roro with this uh, protection module. That was definitely worth it. Let's see about the second attack. We have a yellow. We're both okay. Whew. All right, now we're going to Taki's turn. Taki will definitely start with hop to it. Choose a hero to draw two cards. Roro, draw two cards. We've got Recharge and the Tactical Retreat. Thank goodness. And then we're going to double time that. We're going to repeat that action. And let's have Roro draw again. So he has his entire deck in his hand. He's got Grapple and the McClank Mead. Now he can play two weapon cards. So she can. She's going to start with her triple throw. If you've played two actions, this deals three light damage instead of one. We only needed two, but that will work. That means this dock is gone. That will place two more aggro here, and we have one more card we can play. We're definitely going to use a katana using that and converting it to one heavy damage. This will mean we're one down, three to go. Let's now draw up to our hand size. We have one card in hand plus two more. That's three. We'll draw two more. And with those two, we have an energize and a hop to it. We have to roll our attack die twice. We get a miss for the first one. And our second one, we get a purple, which no one's in purple. And I think Roro can take this minion out. We need three heavy damage. Tequila. Guess what? We only have one blue item. That one heavy will work. Then we have a swipe followed by another swipe. Swipe, no swipey. Both of those are gone. That final minion is toast. 
That boss was a blast to play. I think we can play one more, shall we? Let's do boss number three, and then I'll leave boss number four for you to find when you get your own copy, because this game is so much fun. Here are the eight cards we can choose from this time. Oh man, there's so many good ones. Uh, look at this, too heavy, but hey, destroy an item. I almost feel like that would be good for Roro. Uh, but this one also would be good. It's too light and a heavy gain an additional three aggro unless you spend an energy. You know what? We never actually, I think, uh, I think this one would actually be really good for Taki because Taki always has energy and this one says spend an energy to remove five aggro from any hero. Yeah, I think Taki is going to grab both of these two. I think these two will be awesome for Taki. And then Roro is going to grab this one. I love this damage. And then, should we get another reaction or an item? When destroy, draw a reaction. Whenever you play a reaction, lose two aggro. I don't play a lot of reactions. Uh, I think maybe this is played any time. If an item is destroyed this turn, deal three. Oh, actually, that could be cool. Let's do return fire because I have ways to destroy items with cards that I have in my deck. <laughs> cool. All right, we'll clear these off. For our third boss, we'll be taking on Ma McClank. 12 of the light damage, 10 of the heavy damage. We have a passive. Whenever the attack die rolls a miss, ha, re-roll it so you don't get a miss. She is never going to miss. You've got Mama Clank cornered. Or are you the ones cornered now? It's time to put your aggro management skills to the test. The aggro checks on, the, uh, on these cards are different each turn. Hope you're ready to do some aggro management. The back of the cards on the boss decks indicate the next turn's upcoming aggro check. So you're going to see the top part of the card will always happen, but then the bottom part may happen depending on if anyone is in that uh, type of aggro. Okay? Uh, we have notes. If you're told to burn a card of a certain type, but you don't have it, you ignore it. If you roll a miss multiple times in a row, keep rolling until it hits something. We will draw her first card, the 10 paces. This says burn two cards in your hand. Then draw two cards, and that's for all heroes. Roro drew his five cards. I don't know if I want to get rid of any of these. A double swipe, maybe the tactical retreat. Uh, the salvage run is amazing, and so is the honey McClank mead. Taki drew a misdirection, triple throw, energize, transformation, and katana. I feel like I could get rid of uh, burn two cards from here and be okay. So I think we're going to start with Roro. I think we'll start with two swipes dealing two heavy damage to Ma, and we'll lose two energy. Seems worth it, losing two energy to place out two of these. We will then play the uh, Honey McLeod Mead, and this will let us lose four aggro, but we have to discard the two cards in hand. That seems worth it. Four aggro puts us down to the gray area. We'll then discard the three cards we played and hopefully we'll find cards that we don't mind burning by drawing our five. Oh, overwhelm, I don't want to burn. Grapple, we can maybe burn. Uh, maybe the return fire. Maybe recharge, actually. I don't use a ton of energy. So I think we'll be okay. We now each have to burn two cards in hand. So Roro will burn grapple and recharge. Oh, that hurts a lot. And Taki will burn Misdirection and Transformation, also, which are awesome. Uh, but then we do each get to draw two cards. Uh, so Taki will grab a Hoppet, and we will grab, uh, grab another Hoppet. Lots of hopping. And Roro over here will grab another Grapple and Thad's TNT. Then we'll move this one aside. We've got Stare Down. So this one says, all heroes gain seven aggro at the end of this turn. And you can see this next card is purple. So that means when it says draw, we're going to have to deal with that one next time. And she's pushing us to get a lot of aggro. So let's see what we want to do. Looking at our hand of five cards, I do think we'll start with one of our hoppets so we can draw two cards. We're going to choose ourselves. So we've got a katana and we've got a motion blur. So spend or move five from any hero. So we could remove some from ourselves. So action two, let's see. You know what? We will play, oh no, I want to do this one. I think action two, oh man, but which one do I, you know what? 
We need light and heavy, so action two, let's do a katana for some light damage. That's a single light damage, barely tickles her toes. With that though, I think our second action then will be the motion blur. This is our third card, but we'll get to spend one more card because we played cards, an action card. So that will spend one energy and we can remove up to five aggro. I wish I had one more to make that as useful, still good. And then our final one, let's go ahead and do our triple throw, which will deal three light damage. Now we're talking pew, pew, pew. <laughs> we're not done yet. We can still use our items. So after grabbing the three aggro, we're going to spend two energy to remove two aggro from all heroes. We'll go down to one and Roro will actually have none. Zero, zero aggro. Take that. Okay, that was our four actions this round. We still have three cards in hand, so we'll draw two. We got a double time, and we've got the big squeeze. We now each gain seven aggro. One, two, three, all the way up to seven, and we're only at yellow. We're at mid-yellow for Roro. Starting Roro's turn, we will see what draw is. So we have one auto attack, and if we're anyone's in purple, we'll have a second attack. And don't forget, she can't miss. I just want to show you the awesome combo Roro has in his hand, but it auto kills us. So I don't think I can do it. <laughs> we have Thad's TNT here. Two uh, heavy damage, destroy an item. Okay, we destroy an item. Oh, overwhelm. This also destroys an item. Three more damage. Oh, when we destroy an item, guess what? If an item was destroyed, three light damage as well. Ah, the only thing I don't have, if I had a way to get one of my items back right away, I maybe would do it. But then I'm way at purple, she would attack twice, and we're dead. So I think, looking at this hand, I feel like I need... Ah, I think all I'm going to do is play grapple. I'm going to do one card. This will do one light damage, and then we can move up to two aggro from Toki, um, Taki to ourselves. I don't think I'm going to do that. We'll grab that one damage from here. Now is when I really wish we could get some more energy so we could help out with some of the aggro for Taki, but I can't do that. I'm going to keep all four cards in hand, just draw one, and we have our salvage run, which makes this a lot more doable. I wish I had that salvage run in my hand before, but still good. We'll do the one basic attack, and we have a purple. No one's in purple. We are, uh, no one is in purple, so that means we don't do the second attack. However, if we look at the next card, it's red. Bang, bang. This doesn't sound good. Yeah, I have a feeling she's going to attack us twice. Taki's first action will be to energize, gaining one energy. This will help us out a little bit, I think because we can now play the big squeeze doing two light damage, spending that energy to remove four aggro from Roro. Losing the one energy is doable. Two more light damage from Ma McClank. We actually only have one, two, three, four, five more to go. That will place two aggro here, removing four from Roro. One, two, three, four. We need to play a second action, so let's do a hop it for sure to draw the final two cards of our deck, and we can play one more card. Do we want to do the katana? Uh, gain an additional three aggro. Oh, I don't think we can handle that. If we do this, that's one heavy, but that puts us into purple. I don't know if I want to do that. Discard your hand to draw five. Ooh, you know what? I can do this one. Repeat an effect of another action we've played. We'll use that one to gain one energy back. Unfortunately, though, we don't have the two energy needed to be able to activate this and get us out of red, which is a bummer. I have to shuffle, and I redrew. We've got the big squeeze and motion blur, along with the three cards in hand. This is going to hurt. We're going to be attacked twice. We've got a green, which hits everybody. That is why we have the protection module. When you block with this, you may also block for another hero at the same time so that we're both blocked with that protection module. And don't forget, we have that return fire. If an item was destroyed this turn, yes, it was. We get to deal three damage. That was a burn card. Don't forget that, so we won't see that again. But three more light damage. However, the only bad thing about this is it pushes us into yellow. So now if we roll a yellow, it'll hit Roro. But heck, if we roll a red, it's going to hit Taki anyways. We'll do our second attack from Ma. It's a yellow. That's going to hit both of them. That means both our strategy module and the prototype Zord are toast. 
Oh, I love how hard she is. Oh, boom, boom. What's this one? Oh, yeah. If we're in yellow, she attacks twice and she doesn't miss. We're so going down. Because of that, let's just have some fun. We're going to use that salvage run to get uh, spending our final energy to get one of our items back. And then with that item, we are going to use overwhelm. We're going to destroy that item, but we get to deal three damage to Mama Clank. That was two light and one heavy. Not bad. And then we'll end with the tequila, which allows us to do one light, which is useless, but another heavy. We almost took her down. All of this, though, becomes aggro. We only have one card in hand. We'll draw up. I had to shuffle. Oh, look at all these attacks. <laughs> oh, we do have a reaction. So if uh, she rolls a green, I do think we can change it to a miss, and that will work. That's our only saving grace. She will attack us twice. It's a yellow. I have no way to mitigate that. That kills Roro. Roro has no items left. We're done. Oh, that was so good. So you saw those first two bosses, I handled pretty well. This uh, Mom McClank, ouch, because if you look at the next one, it's green, okay? And then it goes to yellow. I'm not even going to flip these so you don't know what they do. <laughs> and then there's a whole nother unlock set. So after you do beat her, you unlock this, and then you play an epic boss, uh, which is actually multiple bosses. And that's all I'm going to say. I don't want to spoil anything else. I've shown you three out of the four bosses from episode two. Here we have the four more heroes you can play as. You can play as Sophia the Sniper. She uses a hero die, and sometimes you can deal heavy damage. Sometimes you can deal double light damage. Sometimes you totally miss. I think there's a blank side on this die. Okay, so she's the only one that uses this die. We have Kakeus over here, the Plague Doctor. He has a lot of cards that make him discard cards, but his items give you damage every time you discard cards. So cool. We have Edric. He has a flamethrower. So as you burn cards, his flamethrower card becomes more powerful. He has some of the best items for defending. He has one that, hey, after you burn an item, uh, you can actually put it back on top of your deck by burning another card or another one that just gets rid of all of his aggro. And then Will over here has arrows. And as he shoots his arrow, arrows, they're one-time use. They go into your burn pile. But then one of your items, when you burn it, you can get all cards with the arrow name back into your hand. <laughs> so cool. So he's kind of a glass cannon. Uh, he also has a card that doubles another player's attack. So when I do an overwhelm with Roro, he could double that double that overwhelm. Overwhelm, I can't talk. Oh, these are so much fun. I can't wait to see what's in episode three and what's in this prologue. I have no idea, or I should say epilogue. I have no idea if they're doing any expansions for this, but this season one is super fun. My kids like it. My wife, she was like, no, it looks okay. The art's kind of fun. And she thought it'd be more of a kid game, which you can play with kids, but we had so much fun playing just us two. Uh, and then with the kids, so playing with four worked really well. I do think these player boards are a little bit flimsy. I have no idea, though, if that's actual what they're going to be like or if that's just a prototype. But really, it's hard for me to say anything critical about this game because it's so fun. I love building your decks. I love that there's four bosses in one episode, and then you can play different episodes. You can build your decks differently each time, play with different characters. Yeah, this is going to be a great game that I'm going to add to my collection. <laughs> I will be backing this for sure. Hopefully this helped you decide if you're interested in this game. Make sure to check out Co-op Guild and One Stop's playthroughs. I'll put those links in the description below once they're live. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to our patrons for supporting us. It's because of you all we're able to do what we're doing. And if you're excited to see what comes next, I need you to meet me at the table. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.